Scribes and Pharisees asked our Lord about the greatest commandment. He replied, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. So why do we hear some of today's most prominent pastors saying things like this? It had everything to do with how we talk about the Bible. And specifically, or along with that, what we point to as the foundation of faith, which for most Christians, unfortunately, is the Bible. We need to do better. We need to love God with all our hearts and stand unashamedly on the rock of His Word. We need to love the Lord with all of our souls and respond to the worldview issues of our day with the wisdom and discernment that comes only from Him. We need to love the Lord with our minds and understand the calling of God's people in every area of life in God's world. We need to love the Lord our God with all our strength and face the work of building a life-giving, God-honoring culture. Join us for 10 days at the Runner Academy for Cultural Leadership as we consider how the gospel influences all of life and culture and the role that we have to play in applying foundational Christian thinking to every area of life. non rock a boatus must stop. I don't want to rock the boat. I want to sink it. Are you going to bark all day, little doggy? Or are you going to bite? Brett, delusional. The, yeah, I love you, Jeff. Uh, delusional, yeah. Delusional is okay in your worldview. I'm an animal. You don't chastise chickens for being delusional. You don't chastise pigs for being delusional. So you calling me delusional using your worldview is perfectly okay. It doesn't really hurt. <laughs> she hung up on me. Yes! Yes! What? What? Desperate times call for faithful men and not for careful men. The careful men come later and write the biographies of the faithful men, lauding them for their courage. Go into all the world and make disciples. Not go into the world and make buddies. Not to make brosives. Right. Don't go into the world and make homies. Right. Disciples. Well, I, yeah. got, I got a bit of a jiggle neck. <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke, Pastor. No. When we have the real message of truth, we cannot let somebody say they're speaking truth when yeah. they're not. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me, no God was formed, nor shall there be after me. I, I am Yahweh, and besides me, there is no Savior. That's Isaiah 43, 10 and 11, y'all. This is the gospel heard around the world, Apologia Radio. Get more at ApologiaStudios.com, A-P-O-L-O-G-I-A, Studios.com. Go there, get access to hundreds and hundreds of podcasts and radio show episodes from Provoke to Sheologians to Apologia Radio and Cultish, all there at ApologiaStudios.com. Also sign up for all access. When you do, you get get all kinds of additional content like The Academy. The Academy. With all kinds of great new stuff that just dropped. Oh, yeah. And and more to come. And more to come. We also have uh, collision episodes in their full comprehensive uh, detail happening yeah. at Apologia Studios for all access. We also have the Apologia Radio After Show, which is going to take place right after this show here on YouTube. Over at Apologia Studios, you'll be able to do the all access uh, after show. And we have just tons of content there. And every time you guys sign up for all access, you guys partner with us in this ministry. Whatever the ministry, the on the street evangelism seen by tens of millions of people um, around the globe, whether it's the uh, sermons, the lectures, it's the cultural engagement, or anything with EAN and Abortion Now, you guys are actually supporting that, making all that possible. So thank you to everyone who's done this with us for so many years. Um, we have uh, reached between uh, all the platforms the Lord's allowed us to have um, over a hundred million people uh, and views around the world uh, across platforms. And uh, we're grateful to God for that, the impact that the Lord has allowed this ministry to have. Uh, that is Isaac Benegas. What's up? He, we don't have like a, like a, like a little name for you. No, no. We wait. should call you Talky Talkerson. Let's not, let's not worry about Bang that right yeah. now. Talk, not, let, hey, no, no, let's not worry about the name right now. <laughs> let's worry about the nickname, <laughs> Talky <Isaac>. Talkerson. <laughs> this is a thing. And this, Son this of is, my love. This is what I've always said. <laughs> yeah. They get self-appointed nicknames. So self-appointed? For, yes. I didn't have self-appointed my nickname. 
I didn't Nick. I didn't self appoint. That's what people called appointed. me in high school. They called me the ninja. But uh, you can't, you can't I verify I didn't, that. I didn't, I, you can ver- I could contact my old my alma mater. I don't know. Who's who, who, well, I guess okay. Luke. I, I think somebody started calling Luke the bear. I called was him it the bear. you? That was me. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I called him the bear. And well, then Joy, we were like, "What do we call you?" And we're like, the only girl here. You're the girl. Yeah. Right. It's so, really no fun when you. We'll, we'll self figure out. Name uh, your, we'll figure yeah. out a really cool nickname for yeah. me. Talkerson. Wow. It's talky talk. No, dude. This, um, this extended time. <laughs> Over e. time. E.T. E.T. E. <laughs> so, uh, so you guys know, too, this is the reason why they have me on. Uh, yeah, so okay. I just wanted this, to have This you is on. the segment. They're like, hey, mm. we need to have a segment where we uh, can kind of just like laugh, this hang is, out, This chill, is the truth. You know? this Isaac, E.T. The <laughs> <Benegas. laughs> E.T. Extended time. <laughs> extended time. Oh, goodness. All right. I think this is the first time, too. Us three have been on uh, Apology Radio. May, that may be the case. Yes. Uh, or no, when we did the Revelation one, were you on with us in the Revelation one, or was that no. Luke? That was Luke. That was Luke. That was okay. Luke. All right. Yeah. First time. All right. It would have been. Too. I would have. Uh, I would have liked uh, <laughs> Conover to be on that uh, that podcast. Which one? Oh, that's all right. You did a good. Oh, he would have been great. Oh, it would have been, oh, been great. Okay. So yeah. speaking of, this is uh, Zachary Conover, director commu- director of my mouth's not working today. First day back from sabbatical. Director of Communications of End Abortion Now. Good to be here as usual, gentlemen. <sighs> All right, ET. I always, going try, on? <laughs> this is, I always try to anticipate. <laughs> going home today? Or? I always try to anticipate <laughs> this. Home? And so before, I'm just like, how am I going to approach this? Mm-hmm. And then it happens, and then I just don't you even got, know what just, to say. You just yeah, draw a blank. I just, blank. I just oh. draw a blank. <laughs> but that's what happened, too, when I uh, hosted Apology Radio a few weeks back. Yeah. Uh, which, of course, I want to point out that... Um, I got more views than when Luke hosted Apology oh, Radio. Uh, yes, so, you did. Yes. Uh, Deservedly so. Well, he's not here to defend himself. Go ahead and throw <laughs> yes, that out yes. there. Well, it was a sabbatical. good episode. It was a good episode. Yeah. It was good. I love how I love the way good. you spoke in that episode. It was just very focused and really? like very like. I don't know. I, I wanted to redo. I, I just want to say I'm so thankful for all of you in terms of the, the episodes you guys did. Phenomenal. Uh-huh. And then when you guys did the uh, the response on the theonomy stuff, uh, the, the couple episodes you did with that was oh, just Luke, absolutely. Uh-huh. I was. You caught some of that? Uh, yeah, I watched all of them. I was enthralled it was, it was amazing good. is it a great job <laughs> eric a... did a good job too oh, yes, yes. Yeah. yeah so uh let's get right into it guys uh so this is apology radio uh we try to engage with cultural stuff and uh, gospel stuff and theology stuff uh that uh, just is a broad spectrum but everyone knows that our church's ministry has a, a big big heart for the latter-day saints the latter-day saint community we love mormons um mm. Deeply, deeply yep. love Mormons, yep. and you've you guys have all heard me say many times before. If you've been listening for any period of time, you've heard me say that uh, Latter Day Saints are some of my favorite people in the world, mm-hmm. and uh, I genuinely mean that. Uh, you've heard me talk about the relationships that I have with Latter Day Saints, the friendships that I've had with Latter Day Saints, and uh, those are meaningful relationships and friendships. And I, um, I've often said that. Um, you know, uh, if I had a choice of a community that I wanted to live in, in many parts of this country, I would, I would choose to live in, in some of these uh, Mormon communities uh, south of Salt Lake City. Uh, they know how to build uh, good communities. I love the Mormon people, and uh, I mean that. And, and I began my uh, – what? What did you uh, Nothing. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> just a nice big. What's up, ET? No, yeah, no, just, I was actually laughing at the ET thing. But, oh, uh, okay, was, all right, yeah. all right. <laughs> all right. That so, um, my way into into engaging uh, with the Mormon community was because uh, a good friend of mine was a Latter Day Saint, and he was trying with his family to convert me uh, to Mormonism, and so that's how I got into having relationships with Latter Day Saints and engaging with uh, Mormon teaching and uh, Mormon doctrine. And uh, that was my entrance into this. It was a passion to reach Latter-day Saints and always has been. It's never changed. It's only really grown. And uh, so much of what you've seen on Apologia Studios of us going out to the Mormon temple or doing Mormon uh, evangelism, street evangelism, uh, that was being done by us, by me uh, and us, uh, long before we had recording devices and video cameras um, I can't even tell you how many hours on the street that we spent uh, reaching Latter-day Saints and our Mormon neighbors um, uh, before we ever had a camera. And uh, when we started actually recording the conversations, we saw that it was a great blessing to both 
Christians and Latter-day Saints to, to be able to see conversations that were respectful in nature, uh, loving, gracious um, uh, between Latter-day Saints and Mormons. And we saw that it was, a, it was a great benefit to people to see that taking place. And so, of course, we were doing what we always do, go out yeah. and do evangelism and just turn the camera on so that the world can see uh, those public conversations happening on the streets and it's broadcast, broadcast around the world. And as a result of all of that, we have, of course, we're thankful to God for this, uh, seen thousands and thousands of Latter-day Saints come out of Mormonism to know the true and living Jesus Christ, the real Christ, uh, through the biblical gospel. And so with that uh, brings us to the discussion for today. Uh, There is right now a guy on YouTube named David Alexander, and David Alexander, um, he has a testimony uh, that he was an evangelical for um, decades and that he was even a pastor. Uh, He was a pastor, and he has now, in his later years, converted to Mormonism. He's become a Mormonism. Um, His conversion is rather recent. Um, It's it's less than a year at this point, uh, but he is on fire for uh, uh, Mormonism. He is in what I would call the romance stage of uh of conversion and uh, that takes place not by the way it's not offensive i don't mean that offensive in any way towards just david i'm not saying the romance period for david i'm saying that that typically happens when people convert to say roman catholicism or eastern orthodoxy or to mormonism there's a romance period well, if you listen to the way he talks about it oh, the yeah. most beautiful uh, yeah. religious express you know right. great yeah. greatest people on earth and you know you know all that and uh, these you know shedding t- shedding tears over the prophets and and those sorts of things so he's in the romance stage i don't mean that offensively i mean genuinely that's what takes place and uh He's uh, putting a lot of content out, a lot of videos out. He mentioned Apologia and me in a recent conversation that he had with somebody. Um, uh, what was it called again? It's called the, the, the Cougar Chronicle. The Cougar Chronicle. And so they mentioned uh, my name specifically. It's in the title. Uh, Reaching Evangelicals and What About Apologia Jeff? And there's a reason for, I think, the designation of Apologia Jeff because he talks about another Pastor Jeff in another video. So he's specifically using my name and Apologia's name in his title. And uh, so we thought, well, let's kind of engage with this. Now, here's the challenge. I want to say this ahead of time. The hard thing about what we're about to do is that there's no expectation from me that David Alexander is going to watch this content and interaction. And in a moment, you're going to see exactly why I'm saying that. So some might say, why bother doing it if he says he's not going to watch it? And I think the reason we want to do this is for you Latter-day Saints out there who actually do care Mm -hmm. about um, properly... um, uh, properly handling the Word of God. Uh, for you Latter-day Saints out there that do care about accurately describing what another person believes. And so really, this episode is for, of course, Christians who want to you know, learn how to engage this, but it's for the Latter-day Saints. Hmm. Um, I'm not going to do what David has done regularly, regularly in his videos and uh, try to make this about personality and, and those sorts of things. I, I really want to engage with what's right in front of us and uh, say, okay, let's leave all the personality stuff out of it and all the slights and the jabs, and let's just engage with the actual discussion itself. Because David, um, I think anybody could see for themselves, and in much of what, what he does, you, you, you kind of have to wade through a lot of you know, the attacks on Christians personally and personal jabs and those sorts of things. I, I want to say, let's do this with integrity. And let's actually engage with what the man actually claims. Let's ask the question. This is what I would just humbly suggest to my Latter-day Saint friends. Ask the question, okay? And please just just do this humbly, okay? You you can think I'm wrong. That's fine. Uh, But just ask the question, is David actually engaging with the text? Mm. When David tries to respond to particular verses uh, that are are suggested by us or given by us, um, is he actually responding to the text? Or is he more waving his hand? Um, is he changing the subject and leaping out of one book yeah. um, and jumping to another book entirely into a completely different context to try to answer a challenge being given? Here's the question to ask, ready? Because all of us are image bearers of God. Mormons and Christians agree with that. And we're all accountable to God and we're all sinners. Mormons and Christians, common ground, we agree. We're all accountable to a holy God that we've sinned against and we're all in God's image and we all have to answer to God. And so uh, personality stuff aside, 
if we care about actually accurately handling the truth, then we need to actually demonstrate that we care by saying, you know, I'm going to even challenge my favorite, right? I'm not going to show partiality. I'm going to challenge even my favorites. That's something we all have to be willing to do. Even our heroes need to be willing to be challenged by us. Are they speaking the truth? Are they speaking consistently with the word of God? Um, did they fall off here? Have they done a face plant here? Uh, and just be willing to say, yeah, you know, that's, that's true. They did. And so that's what we're asking everyone to do today in this episode is just final thing on this test what's being said. Hmm. Is David accurately handling the word of God? Is he, is he handling the objections or not? Um, are we accurately handling the word of God? And I would just challenge you, go to the text. Uh, don't believe me because of my say so. Um, I, I don't want you to follow me at all. I want you to know Jesus. That's the truth. I want you to know him because that is the fundamentally most important thing. It isn't about me. It isn't about David Alexander. It's about the word of the living God. Who's speaking consistently with God's word? I think the uh, encouragement for Latter-day Saint uh, friends as well is to listen to the words of their own prophets. Brigham, you know, had something to say about this. Take yep. up the Bible, compare the religion of the Latter-day Saints with it, and see if it will stand the test. So That's there's right. an imitation from your own prophets and apostles to do the very thing that, we, that we're asking for. Um, examine these things in context, and really important, not just jumping around looking for different verses to answer an issue, but stay with the text. See where the argument starts, where it leads, and then draw your conclusion from Scripture itself. Yes. And that's that's the, the key issue. There's an invitation for Mormon prophets and apostles to do exactly what we're doing today. So Latter-day Saints, you've been given an invitation by your leadership to do exactly what's being done here. Um, go to the text. Is it being consistent? Test the religion of the Latter-day Saints, see if it's true. Now, here's the deal. Uh, David's put out a lot of content, and uh, I would love to spend hours and hours and hours responding to all of it. And, you know, I'm sure we're going to do it here and there in piecemeal. But for today, this particular video is about an hour and 10 minutes long. Uh, we're going to respond to just uh, three parts of it, three short parts of it, and uh, we're going to try to do it in short order here. So um, this was the opening. Make sure I have the right one pulled up here. Yes, I do. Okay. So this was the opening, just to give some context on the Cougar Chronicle, David Alexander, Reaching Evangelicals, and what about Apologia, Jeff? I just hope any Latter-day Saints that are watching this don't go, okay, I'm going to go watch <laughs> this, this <laughs> Apologia Studios characters. They don't deserve one click from the Latter-day Saints, man. They're just, they're just trying to destroy the most beautiful faith on earth and sow distrust and unbelief in the hearts of people that really need to hold on to their childlike tra trust and their faith in their leaders, in what they've been taught, and in the covenant path. Uh, in typical cult-like form, don't look behind the curtain. Uh, don't test. Don't listen. Don't hear what they're saying. Don't even bother engaging with what they're saying. Um, You've seen that they've taken that strategy to heart. They, they have. That, that was something that uh, people for, for decades were saying in my involvement in, in engaging with Latter-day Saints is, uh, is that anti-Mormon literature? Oh, I'm not allowed to look at it. I'm not even going to bother looking at it. I'm not even going to bother engaging. Very different from uh, the ancient Christian faith uh, from the apostles, from the Lord Jesus himself, where the Lord Jesus uh, had no problem engaging with those who opposed his ministry and would refute them. The apostle Paul in Acts chapter 9, the very first thing he does after his conversion to Christ, after trying to destroy the faith, he goes to uh, Damascus and he goes to the synagogues. And he, it says that he reasons from the scriptures, proving that Jesus is the Messiah there at the synagogues. And it was, uh, it was obviously such a moment in terms of the engagement and the contending for the faith with the Apostle Paul that people wanted him dead. They tried to kill him. Uh, because he was actually going to engage them on their own ground. You see it in a, the, that in Apollos, in Acts, in Acts chapter 18, he vigorously refutes the Jews publicly, proving that Jesus is the Messiah. You see the command in Scripture in 1 Peter 3.15, that we are to sanctify Christ as Lord in our hearts and to always be ready to give a reasoned defense, an apologia, to everyone who asks us, a reason for the hope that's within us, and to do it with gentleness and with reverence. That's a command from an inspired apostle. Be ready with a reasoned defense. I don't see any hide from... 
uh, the arguments or don't uh, don't uh, don't look, don't even bother engaging with. Um, and you, of course, see in in, in Jude uh, verse three to earnestly contend for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. So very different methodology suggested by inspired apostles and uh, prophets. Um, then David Alexander is, is saying here, and also I just want to point out, I think anybody can see, and I mean this with as much respect as I can give, but I need to say it and not speak in a crooked way, but in a straight way. Um, anybody can see the rank hypocrisy in that statement from, uh, from uh, it, it didn't matter if it's coming from David Alexander, from anybody, it rank hypocrisy. David Alexander's channel is dedicated uh, to um, refuting uh, Orthodox Christianity and the uh, the Orthodox Christian faith. Um, his channel is dedicated to um, belittling, maligning, um, critiquing, and even attacking historic Christian orthodoxy, denigrating the doctrine of the Trinity, and all the rest. So he does the very thing that he's accusing us of doing uh, towards the Christian faith. And so anybody, like I said, can point out the rank hypocrisy there. Let's just be honest and put the cards on the table. Let's just be honest both of us believe that we're in the truth and both of us believe that the other is an error. And so, yes, let's just be honest and put it on the table. Both of us are hoping that the other person's um, uh, beliefs about God are ultimately uh, destroyed, that they go away and that the true faith remains. We're both doing that. And so to, to suggest in some way that like, somehow that we are, are the ones that are trying to destroy others' faith, David... <sighs> Friend, that's what you're doing, but you're just doing it on the side of Mormonism. So let's just be honest about the cards on the table. We're both engaging with each other's religion and saying that it's false. And so trying to pretend that you're not doing that is just, I mean this again respectfully, it's just rank hypocrisy. Let's just be men of integrity and just speak with integrity and, uh, and not set up um, 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 uh, double standards and um, um, unequal weights and measures. I, th I think the motivation of our hearts too. Anytime we're speaking with you know an unbeliever, but a Latter Day Saint in particular, is we're not trying to rob them of faith. No, you know we're trying to point them to faith in the true and living Christ of Scripture. And so, what I would want to communicate, and I have before, and I know we all have, is that the sincerity of your faith is irrelevant. It's the object of your faith that matters. Yeah, it's not how sincerely you believe or how earnestly you are wedded to your beliefs or your theology that will save you. It's, it's the strength of, of the, the Savior himself, Jesus. If, if it's, if it's in, in anything other than the biblical Christ, then ultimately the faith, however sincere it may be, is misplaced. Yeah. And so that's what I try to communicate. I know we all do to our Latter-day Saint friends and neighbors is we know that you believe in God. We know that you're passionate and zealous for your beliefs, that you're willing to go to extreme lengths in order to propagate those beliefs. There's Mormon missionaries riding around my community on bicycles, going door to door. Yeah. I've sat down with them too, those same ones. Mm -hmm. and, but and it's not and, how sincere they are. No. It's who is Christ. Right, exactly. Who is who is the true Christ, the one Jesus that can save, and what is the true gospel? Because scripture says that there are false Christs, and the scripture says that there are false gospels. And so one Christ will save and one gospel will save. And so that's the key issue. And when you mention those Mormon missionaries are coming door to door and coming to our houses, what's the first lesson? Hmm. The first, first lesson vision. is the first vision account. Right. Yeah. And what's the first vision account? That Joseph all says religions he's, are wrong. He's, he's told to join none of the churches for they are yes. all wrong. All their creeds are an abomination. All their professors are corrupt. They draw near to me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. That's what's being given globally right now, this moment uh, in people's homes around the world by more missionaries is that every Christian church is wrong. Join none of them. They're all wrong. Their creeds are an abomination, loathsome to God. All their professors, the professors of the Christian faith are all corrupt. That's what Mormonism is propagating around the world. And so again, it is just rank hypocrisy. Well, we know what they believe is that outside of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, there is no... Um, you know, salvation ultimately. There's yeah. no ultimate view of exaltation, right. as they would put it, right? Moving on to the, the celestial kingdom and all that that requires. But, you know, uh, both sides have an exclusive view. Of For truth. sure. <laughs> so we shouldn't, no we, we, that. we shouldn't pretend like that's not the case. Right, and what yes. David is doing here is is kind of in that vein. Yeah. Um, you know, don't even bother listening. These guys are trying to destroy people's faith. It's like, 
What do you think more missionaries are doing when they come to every Christian's door with yeah. the first vision account? To dismantle the authority and uh, inerrancy of God's word yep. and to get you to trust in subsequent revelation yep. and in things that contradict scripture ultimately. That's right. Here we go. So, you, you know, YouTube is a problem. It's like people, people just think it's like you can just wander onto YouTube and if something's there, you should just listen to it. But... I, I personally will never click on any video from Apollo Judius Apologia Studios again. <laughs> Actually, these characters uh -huh. a few weeks ago, you might you might know this, Luke. They actually made a response to me video. Apologia, you know? Yeah. I was like, not aware of this. Our response to David Alexander, Apologia Utah, did a response. And mm. please don't you know what? I haven't even watched it. I'm not gonna watch it. <laughs> I am not uh -huh. going to be clickbait for Apologia Studios. And they. Um, so, again, respectfully, the rank hypocrisy here, I will not click on. You're not even going to watch. You're not even, even going to engage with. You're going to debate with an imaginary opponent with no willingness to actually talk to that person themselves and i'll give you an invitation david you you will be you can you'll be treated you'll be treated with respect and with love and with kindness um and you're invited you come on the show let's have a discussion i'm, I'm open to having a discussion with you i'd be happy to have you on we'll fly him out well yeah he's from he's in australia oh is, he's, he's in, australia? in australia yeah yeah serious that's what they that's what they wow. say so he's in australia but Never we'll mind. do a zoom we'll do a zoom call <laughs> we'll even work out the time difference situation probably be Pretty tough, but yeah, we'll, we'll, tough. we'd make it happen. Uh, we'd be willing to engage with you. Yeah. Uh, it saddens us that you're not willing to engage with the people that you're actually engaging with in an imaginary manner. Um, and so you're, you'll do discussions um, uh, saying things that actually are patently false um, with an imaginary opponent, but you won't actually be willing to engage. You won't click on content because you said you will not be clickbait for them. But I just want everyone to look at the screen here. Gabe, pull this up here. This is your channel, David. Okay, respectfully again, this is you're engaging with what you just claimed. This is your channel, David Alexander on YouTube, and the title of the video is Reaching Evangelicals and What About Apologia, Jeff? So could I say to you with the standards that you're setting up uh, that you're just trying to clickbait using my name? Uh, and that, uh, so should I tell people, hey guys, don't fall for the clickbait of David Alexander. He's using my name and Apologia's name in his title. Don't even bother clicking on it and I'm not going to watch it. Mm -hmm. See, the double standards here are just uh, heavy, yeah. uh, really, really heavy. And so I, I just, again, we need to, I just engage, I'm just engaging with what David is actually saying here. But I, I think that we can all see that this, this, is, this is rank hypocrisy. Um, and uh, it's setting up a standard for yourself that you, you, you don't want for others. And uh, I think that anybody can see it. And uh, moving on now uh, to his next statement. Post comments on, on the comments of my videos. They say, why don't you answer? Why don't you answer our video and discuss this with us? I'm like, just go away, man. I'm not <laughs> going to discuss anything with you. I put the, the truth. Our job is to denounce deception. And I'm doing that and bear witness to the truth and let the truth stand on its own. I'm just going to declare the truth and the truth has the power to persuade anybody that's humble and willing enough to cry out that our father would open their eyes and show them if it's true. But, mm -hmm. but to debate like, like it's so sad. I, I hope, I hope I I'm quite sure actually our general authorities are probably communicating to whoever's in charge of missionary training to let the missionaries know when you run into characters like this, don't let them use you as clickbait and waste your time letting them beat you over the head and Bible bash you for an hour. Go find somebody that's actually thirsty for the truth. You know, mm -hmm. to engage people like this in conversation is beyond pointless. So you can talk about them but don't bother engaging with them. And uh, I think that speaks volumes, personally. I think it speaks volumes, and I think it speaks to um, so much of the nature of the methodology of the Latter-day Saints over yes. the last generation in yes. terms of uh, don't engage, mm -hmm. avoid, don't read the content. Um, and that's a, that's a far cry from biblical Christianity and what comes from the Bible itself. 
you don't see um, the apostles encouraging such a thing. You actually see the Christian faith being boldly proclaimed in the world in the hardest places, like when the Apostle Paul goes to the Areopagus, Mars Hill. He's going to the toughest place of philo- philosophical dis- uh, debate and discussion, and he's engaging with the Christian faith, and he's speaking boldly. And, um, and the, the command to Christians is to be ready to give a reason defense to everyone who asks of you a reason for the hope that's within you. How would David Alexander uh, square that command from 1 Peter 3.15 with what he's just said? Uh, don't engage with don't bother with, uh, don't talk to, don't look at their videos, none of that stuff. Um, I think you, you can't square it uh, because what David is operating with right now is, is an unchristian worldview, world and life view. I think this has trickle down ramifications for the way that the average Mormon and in particular Mormon missionaries engage people um, in order to propagate their beliefs. I think that as you meet with Mormon missionaries, and they sense from you that you are not going to be just a, a passive spectator in terms of just receiving their teachings and what they have to say, but you're kind of openly challenging their beliefs and, and taking them to scripture and and trying to have them account for these things. They will quickly get the idea that you are not one to um, necessarily uh, just receive and listen, right? You're uh, it, When you're you know, with them and you're dialoguing with them and you're giving them truth and and trying to do this graciously. What I have found in my experience, I'm sure this has been confirmed with others, is once they find out that, you know, you're not just someone looking to receive the information and, and join their ranks is they tend to to cut off the contact. Yeah. That they, they tend to discontinue the meetings. At least that's what happened with me in my last meeting with the Mormon missionaries. It was like questions, questions, and then it was like, okay, well, we're done here. Right. Um, you know, we're we're not gonna meet with you anymore. Now that we know uh, you know, what you believe, you're not down with our teachings, it was over yeah. after that. And then there's uh I mean typically at that point I, I think with my experience I've it becomes kind of a, a m- emotional response right. at that point. Absolutely, yeah, right. yeah. absolutely. And just bury testimony. Yeah, don't that's don't exactly engage with the arguments. Uh, don't engage with the tax. Just bury your testimony. And that's that's that's, exactly that's, that's it, that is what more missionaries have been taught. Yes, is that when you you engage with somebody who actually is giving you stuff that becomes tough tough to answer, just bury your testimony. Yeah, which the answer for Christians is well, just bury yours right back. If we're if that's yeah. if that's the standard for truth, just it's my personal experience. If that's what you're going to fall on, then okay, great. Let's just do it. Let's get every religion in the world to fill the room and everyone give their personal testimony about their experience. Is that how truth is discovered? Just bear your testimony in response to a question from the Word of God? Uh, that's not that's not how truth is grounded. And you, and you have missionaries tell you, you know, it doesn't matter what you say to me. Mm-hmm. Literally doesn't matter. I know that Joseph Smith was a true prophet. This is the true church. Doesn't matter what you say. Doesn't matter what you show me in there. Right. And so right. who has the philosophical commitment here? To never be corrected, which is which is, is going to be his charge. is a strange way to go in terms of if your religion says that this is another testament of Jesus Christ, if this is something that is coming from the same God that gave us that Bible, it's a strange way to go to say I don't care what you show me in that Bible, I'm going to believe this right. over that, which I've heard so many times that I've I've I can't even count. Um, and if if this is from the same God, if this revelation is from the same God, uh, then it has to be consistent with it. And that's that's what Christians are saying to our Mormon friends, is if it's the same God's revelation, then he needs to sound the same. And uh, why isn't he? That's the challenge. Why isn't he sounding the same? Why does he say different things? Why, does it, why is it a different ma- way of salvation? Why is it a different God? Why are Mormon prophets and apostles denigrating the scriptures and creating an entire new religion that doesn't even match that ancient revelation that Joseph said that it came from? I mean, is this really another testament of Jesus Christ? Is it consistent with the previous testament? And that's all Christians have been saying to Mormons since the inception, is that this doesn't match what God said about himself before, nor his gospel. And that's the challenge. Okay, onward. From yeah. anybody in the church. Right. And so that, my thing what partly God, is I, we need I people... Saw. Yeah, and and I'm your thing was why is there I, nobody? <laughs> I saw these back videos, on this? and they got my goat. I'm like, this is nuts. These characters, these characters do not know what they're talking about. They're actually lying. Like like when somebody is intelligent and well versed in church history, as Jeff Durbin can say with a straight face that. 
like he does at the beginning of this video at about 45 seconds, that the church, that Christians have taught Trinita the doctrine of the Trinity for 2,000 years. I'm like, go away. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, but I think we need... I don't I find that be a very substantial answer, but also no. that's not from this video. This video that you guys are actually reviewing is about a minute long. I think it's about a minute long. Yeah, they mentioned a, some about a 40 minute long video. He must, he must be thinking about a different video. Uh, but in terms of the, the, the doctrine of the Trinity, uh, there's no question if you understand church history that the doctrine of the Trinity has been believed by Christians, not just from the scriptures themselves but from the very earliest stages of the church. I mean, if you go into the second century of the church, you see the, what, what the church is arguing for. Even if you start earlier than that, the apostles were experiential Trinitarians. Well, that's what I mean, is, is the New <laughs> Testament itself, and then you go to moving into the second century, you see that the earliest fights that were beginning when heresy was creeping in, whether it's Sabellian, Sabellianism yeah. or modalism, you can read Tertullian or Justin Martyr, you can go into the discussion, you see Irenaeus, Ignatius, you can read the Didache, you can see that the earliest professions of faith were clearly Trinitarian, clearly Trinitarian, and then you get into the creeds themselves. All the ancient creeds of Christendom all teach the Trinity, whether it's the Nicene Creed, the Athanasian Creed, um, all the creeds of Christendom all affirm Trinitarian uh, orthodoxy. And so, yeah, uh, the Trinity has been believed by the Christians from the earliest stages of the church. The, 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 the term Trinity is, uh, what is it, 186 AD uh, by Tertullian, uh, where you start seeing Christians actually having a, a co coined a term towards it, Trinity, and they're uh, just experiential Trinitarians the whole time, and they're arguing for Trinitarian theology from the very beginning. There is no question, no question at all, that uh, ancient Christian religion, historically, orthodoxy, uh, has always been Trinitarian. Have there been heresies that attempted to cre creep into the church, whether it's like with Arius of Alexandria, or with Sibelius, of, of course, but the Christian, actually, Christian church actually formed together against those heresies. And so um, well, I, that's not a substantial answer to say. I, I, don't, a, I don't know what, um, I don't know why he, he says what he says as far as, um, as though that statement um, is, you know, unsubstantiated or just foolish or outlandish. It just, it, I don't, I don't know what he's referring to, but the Mormon concept and idea of the nature of God is completely foreign to any type of historical orthodox view uh, when we talk about from the time of the apostles to Joseph Smith. And, and maybe not even up to Joseph Smith because the understanding of, of the nature of God even shifted. If you look at what Joseph Smith, mm -hmm. Smith believed earlier compared to, let's say, his later writings and teachings and things like that. But I mean, the response he gives for you talking about church history teaching the Trinity, uh, it's it's fairly obvious, as you just stated, but is is he trying to imply that the concept and understanding of the Mormons' um, understanding of the nature of God is it can be found anywhere within church history? Mm, I, I don't right. know. Yeah, and you have... Uh, He's about to try to substantiate some Mormonism <laughs> was in flux early on. I mean, Joseph Smith started in a monotheistic context, um, uh, and uh, he, in the Book of Mormon, you can see the mess that it is theologically. You can see that you've got movements in, in the Book of Mormon of monotheism to modalism to all kinds of problems within the Book of Mormon itself. Joseph Smith clearly early on wasn't the polytheist that he became later on. Um, you can see the transformation in his theological understanding that happens. He goes into polytheism, uh, very rigorous and uh, intense polytheism later on in his life before he was murdered at Carthage. And so you can see even the transformation taking place uh, within Mormon theology itself. It's not consistent in the first two decades of, of its inception. And so um, what you do see, historic orthodoxy and the Bible teaching, uh, Trinitarian theology from the very, very beginning. And so what I would just say is, is again, as respectfully as I can, uh, David Alexandria, uh, Alexander doesn't know church history. He doesn't understand church history. He clearly doesn't know church history. And so uh, let's move on to the next piece. And now, uh, again, there's so much we could say and do. Uh, but uh, let me jump right into the video here where they try to engage a bit with a video of us talking to some Mormons. 
So this is what we've yeah. been discussing, this Apologia Studio and this specific video. So, right. and, and the fun thing about this is you have a lot of critiques of Apologia, but you also have some critiques about um, the church. Or right. I shouldn't say the church, but some of the, the members in the church. And you've kind of mentioned that um, biblical literacy isn't as high as it could be among the members, and that can lead you into some problems in these encounters. But I'm just going to play it from the beginning. And uh, it's two minutes long, but if you sure. want to say something, just say like, hold on and I'll pause the video. I'll wait, and... I'll wait for the whole two minutes. Let's just listen okay. to the whole two minutes and let Jeff cool. have his day here. Actually, for uh, possibly for copyright purposes, we might get in trouble for that. So we can throw in some words here and there. But oh, okay, I'll throw in words. I'll interrupt, him. I'll interrupt him. I'll interrupt him regularly. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Where? All right, so um, I did skip a few seconds in. He's basically just kind of stopped. Like, these missionaries are trying to walk past him. And this guy is Pastor Jeff Durbin. He's like the head, right. one of the heads, along with James White of Apologia. And he just kind of confronts them, stops them in the street out of the blue. So that's the setup okay. here. Sure. It's all throughout the scriptures. Where? If you really want to know, I guess you could search the scriptures yourselves. You know, the Bible actually says in Isaiah 43.10, Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. I am the first and I am the last. Besides me there is no God. Joseph taught that there were gods before God and you could become one one day. Yeah. The scriptures condemn that. All right, so yeah. you couldn't quite hear it at the beginning, but he just confronts this missionary. He's like, hey, so you think you can become gods? And the missionary's like, uh, 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 um, and then he throws in that Isaiah 43 uh, verse at him, and right. he's still kind of speechless. Do you have right. any, what would you have done in this situation? Um, I would have uh, just said, uh, what's your name? And mm. when he said, uh, my name's Jeff Durbin, I would have said, have a nice day, and I would have kept walking. <laughs> there you go. You, you, you know, I mean, this the spirit of the man, this is not a man that's there looking for life. He's not a man that has a desire to know the truth. He's a man that's absolutely convinced that he already has the truth, even though he doesn't. And, you know, there's there's no point in trying to answer questions that people aren't asking. And Pastor Jeff is really not asking in any way, shape, or form to know the truth about anything. So whenever whenever I'm talking to somebody and it's really obvious that they don't have ears to hear, what's the point? Okay, now I'd say try the apostles. Right. I mean, when they go into cities and in contexts where actually riots break out because of their proclamation of the truth, or when they preach the gospel in such a way that people are taking oaths uh, to not eat food until they're dead, or when they're preaching the gospel in such a way that they have to be lowered out of windows uh, to sneak out of towns uh, because their lives are in danger, um, try them. Uh, because they're preaching to crowds and audiences that are very opposed to what they're saying. When Paul is, again, speaking at the Areopagus, Mars Hill, he's speaking to a bunch of pagans, right. and he is confronting them about their idolatry. Uh, do they have, quote, ears to hear in that moment? Uh, it's, by the way, the sovereign grace of God that allows people to have ears to hear and eyes to see. Precisely. Uh, it's not something that's in the person. There is no one who seeks for God. There's none who does good. There's none righteous. No, not one. Romans chapter three. Uh, no one is able to come to me, Jesus says in John six forty four, unless the father who sent me draws him and I will raise him up on the last day. That, that's, the, that's the teaching of scripture about the nature of humanity uh, before regeneration and God uh, saves a person. And so this whole idea of, of, of uh, I'm only going to talk to people uh, who, who I think are receptive to the truth, um, that's just not how evangelism is done. You know, uh, I noticed what he says about you shortly after. He says, if I sensed enough humility in him, <laughs> then I would do that. So, I mean, this is my perception of who is ready to receive the truth is not what dictates my proclamation. Very good. Right. Like that is just... It goes against, I mean, the, I mean, think about the parable of the sower. The word is being sown indiscriminately. That's right. To the, to, and, and who God, I mean, decides to prepare the soil for to receive that word is completely up to him. That's God. 
But yeah. the role of the proclaimer is to sow the truth indiscriminately. Right. Because let's be honest, who you think is going to respond to the message oftentimes surprises you. That's and you right. know this if you're out proclaiming the gospel on any uh, metric whatsoever, yeah, that's right. right? The person that comes back afterwards, the hostile person rallying critiques and complaints against God and the Bible comes back broken and in tears all of a sudden, yeah. ready yeah. to hear more. Yeah. You have no idea who's ready to receive the truth and who isn't. Yeah. And it's very man And this is obviously that Mormonism is very man-centered. And so David Alexander is giving that perspective, man-centered perspective. It's up to the creature. It's them that decides. It's them that has to have ears to hear. It's eyes to see. This person has to be willing to receive the truth. And and I would just say, look, it, it, and this, get back to, this get back, gets back to the same point I've already made about what David Ale- Alexander is saying. When he tries to chastise someone like myself going out to do evangelism at the Mormon temple, let's not forget that Mormon missionaries are going and knocking on doors indiscriminately um, every single day and walking up to people and spreading Mormonism. We were at the temple because that's where Mormons are, and we're standing there with tracts and our Bibles to have conversations. Mormons do it, and Christians do it. So trying to paint the picture, a caricature of this is a bad guy out here bothering a Mormon missionary, let's, let's not forget the fact that he's a Mormon missionary who spends his days on a bicycle uh, traveling around, finding people to talk to, to spread the message of Mormonism, which is that join none of the churches. They're all wrong. All their creeds are abomination. All their professors are corrupt. Let's not forget that. And so it goes back to the same issue, these double standards here, okay? So let's be honest about the fact that we both believe the other is an error. And so we're talking to each other. The question is, is what we're saying consistent with what God's word says? That's the real issue. Let's not make it about personalities. Let's deal with what's actually being said. You know, Mm -hmm. not that I'm going to judge them. I mean, you know, it's it's easy to be like that. I've been like that. You know, somebody that was so full of myself that you couldn't tell me anything. But this is a man that is so full of himself, you can't really tell him anything. And so... It's interesting, David. uh, You and I have never had a conversation before. We don't know each other. You don't know me. Um, I have a relationship with these gentlemen in here. Uh, They know me. Uh, They know my family. They know my kids. And, um, you know, I would, I would trust their assessment of me. (laughs) You know, I'd be happy to ask Isaac or or Zach, you know, how do you feel? How do you feel about how I'm doing? And do you see any shortcomings? Uh, You know, do you think that I need to repent of anything? Because these men know my life. And I'd say if, if they gave an assessment, I would want to listen to it because they know me. The truth is, David, I don't know you and you don't know me. And so, uh, again, making this so intensely personal, like this man is so full of himself, David, we don't know each other. Um, we could actually do the right thing, the, the, the honorable thing, the thing of integrity, and actually just deal with what each other are saying. Um, I think that'd be more uh, valuable for listeners. But um, again, I, I think that we need to not make this about personal slights, but deal with what is actually being said. You could. I mean... If I thought he could actually hear, if I sensed enough humility in him that I thought he could actually hear one word I was saying, it would be a different story. <laughs> but this man is not like that. Mm-hmm. I, I could I could give him um, a whole... Hey, I'll give you an example, okay? I could say to him, I'll, t- I'll just tell you what I'd say to him if I thought there was some chance of him hearing it, okay? I wouldn't say this to him because I would have picked up immediately there was no chance of him hearing anything from me. <laughs> but, uh, And I would have continued on my way as, as a missionary looking for somebody that was uh, thirsty, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. that was, that was uh, broken and needy. Um, and, and, you know, I, I, I would not have engaged him in conversation for an hour under any way, shape or form. Okay. But if, if he wasn't who he is, if he was a little bit humble, like if he was an evangelical Christian that was, I could sense was dissatisfied and not full of himself and full of his evangelical Christianity in this self-satisfied proud way but was actually really wondering if me as a latter-day saint missionary might know something that he might not know you know like nicodemus coming to the lord jesus christ if i sensed anything like that in him and he asked me about isaiah 43 10 
you want to know what I would say? Is that just a good time to? Yeah, yeah. So um, just to recap, um, he quotes Isaiah 43, 10. Um, yeah. Before me, there was no God. And after me, there will be no other. And this is presented right. as, therefore, um, the LDS conception of God is refuted by the Bible. Thank, thank you to Luke for bringing it back to the main point. <laughs> thank you, Luke. <laughs> just, uh, thank you, Luke. Uh, just to recap, what Jeff said was Isaiah 43.10. Can we talk about that? I like how he wants to stay on issue. <laughs> yeah, the, the good, job, good job to you, Luke, for trying to wrangle uh, David back in there in terms of what you had him on for. Like, David, you know, you're the ex-evangelical pastor. David, you're the guy that knows the Bible. David, you've converted to Mormonism. Help us to respond to the, right. this word from he, God that like, Jeff brings. I, I didn't bring you on for a psychoanalysis. Uh, psychoanalysis. Can we just to recap what Jeff brought up as I put this forty three ten? What we'd like to do is talk about that. And uh, so, <laughs> past all the the slights and jabs and psychoanalysis, can we get to Isaiah forty three ten? So uh, we want to do that in a way that is beneficial to all of you. And so we've we've just spent today introducing you. Uh, to David Alexander and introducing you to a bit of what he said to sort of start this discussion. What we're going to do next week is we're going to actually start to engage with his attempt to respond to Isaiah 4310. Uh, It is uh, respectfully abysmal. It is an absolute face plant, uh, theologically speaking. It's not a response to Isaiah. Um, He jumps from Isaiah to John 17 and doesn't realize that in doing so, he um, theologically cuts his own legs off. And so what we're going to do is spend time actually responding to that, refuting the claims made by David Alexander and his attempt to uh, to respond to for Isaiah 43.10, one of so many texts that uh, we would want to have a conversation about. But what we're going to do is next week on Apology Radio, be ready for it, guys. We've introduced you now to David Alexander, is we're actually going to respond to what he said. We're going to go right from here, right now, into the after show for all of our uh, partners in ministry with us. You make everything we do possible. We're going to go to the after show and have uh, and a, a discussion about how how should what are the main things we need to focus on in in dealing with someone like David Alexander or any Latter Day Saint? How what are the foundations of this? Like how do we move forward in this in a way that's meaningful and and a blessing to them? And what would glorify God? And and what do we need to focus in upon? But we'll save that main discussion for a response to David Alexander for the live show next next week on Apologia Radio. Do you have something you want to say? Um. I think we have, sorry, I think we have mm-hmm. a, a scheduled uh, guest next week. Do we? Yes. Well, we'll we'll cut we'll cut a. That's right, we do. That's okay though. Yes. But I'll cut an. We'll cut an episode. We'll do bonus episodes. Whatever. We'll get to this David Alexander thing, guys. Yeah. Uh, and uh, give you guys a response, refuting his claims. Again, there are hours and hours of content. Uh, again, uh, this is for the Latter Day Saints out there who want uh, to have a good discussion and want to see the answers. Uh, David Alexander has already made it clear. He won't bother engaging. He's not going to click on any content. So this is really uh, for all of you that actually are concerned with what does the word of God say. So uh, that is E.T. Hey, (laughs) mystery guest next week. Zachary Conover. Later. And uh, right here, the Ninja will catch you next week. Right here, Apologia Radio, ApologiaStudios.com. Don't forget to go right now to ApologiaStudios.com for the after show. We'll catch you over there.